What is going on everyone? It's Lewis here with Crypto Elite and today's date is Monday, June 6th. So it is time for another market update. As you could see, this is going to be a different size screen right now. I'm recording this on my actual computer instead of on my ultra wide monitor. So you will be getting the full view. Very cool. Just one thing I wanna say is that Bitcoin finally is, you know, it's a new month. So we closed the month above 30,000. Um, I thought that was pretty good. And now we are starting the new month. It is below the $35,000, $36,000 previous support, which was back here. And obviously below the, you know, thirty-eight dollars to $40,000 uh, resistance, which is right here as well. But I am pretty confident or I am pretty optimistic, I want to say, that we should be getting a move up. So we're going to be going into that. First things first, though, I got to go over the fundamental indicators that I always go over, starting out with the Bitcoin bull run index. This one is currently sitting at 24. And as you can see, it takes into account all of these different metrics. So that's why I really, really like this one. 24, though, is not under 20. And I only really do this if it's under 20. That's when I say, OK, I really want to get in. Um, you know, and it, it basically shows me that it's at a price where or at a certain level or a certain number where I just say, OK, I'm going to get in. And that's what I do with all of these things. So I have the CBBI, uh, the, you know, Bitcoin bull run index. I have the MVRVZ score. I have the R hold ratio. I have all these things. Right. So if they hit a certain number or if they hit a certain zone, that's when I know to go in. So let's say that the MVRVZ score, sorry, MVRVZ score um, comes down into the green, but the CBBI is at, you know, 30. Well, it doesn't matter that the CBBI is in 30 because this is down in the green. Or let's say that this, you know, hits 15 and this has not hit the green and the R hodl ratio has not hit the green. It doesn't matter that these haven't hit the green because this is under 20, you know, so I've, I'll be buying. Same thing with the Bitcoin rainbow chart. If this hits and basically a fire, a fire sale or yeah, basically a fire sale territory, I'm buying. I don't care what any of these other things have to say. And then also with the um, uh, what do you call it? The Bitcoin fear and greed index, which I thought I had on my, I thought I had here. Yeah, here it is. So right now it is from three hours ago. It's a 13, right? So it depends on what these, what these different indicators show me this one, this one under, I think it's under 15, I say is an automatic buy. So last two weeks ago, it was under 15. And so that was an automatic buy for me. But then what I do is if it's an automatic buy, I buy it. But then the next week, I'll look at it again. And then depending on all of the different circumstances that are happening this week, I'll either decide to buy it again, or I'll, you know, hold off. But the very first time that this is under 15, I buy it. The very first time that this hits the green, I'm going to buy it. The very first time that this goes under 20, I'm going to buy it. Uh, Bitcoin I'm talking about. So that's just how these things work. And obviously you saw the MV, the MVRVZ score is not in the green. So that doesn't tell me anything. The R hodl ratio is not in the green. So that doesn't tell me anything. The Bitcoin rainbow chart is in the accumulate phase. Uh, I don't know why I said it like that. It's in the accumulate phase. So, you know, and I do believe this is the accumulation phase. Like I think that accumulating, especially under 30,000 is, is a no brainer. Then there's the Bitcoin fear and greed index, which is under 13, which is normally automatic buy, but it, it's been under 15 for the past three weeks. And I bought it two weeks ago. And it actually worked out well because I think it was 20, I think Bitcoin was $28,000 at that time. And so those are basically the fundamental things that I look at. And now we can move on to the actual charts. One thing that I want to point out right here is on the right hand side, you can see that a lot of the altcoins are moving up when you go to the percent change list. However, I want to point this thing out right here. Look at this percent change list USD, you know, um, ONG USD, ONG BTC, LRC USDT, 
USD, USD, USDT, USDT, USD, 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 USD. So they're going up against US dollars, right? However, if you go to the change and you go what they're going down, what altcoins are going down against, they're all going down usually against Bitcoin, BTC, USD, BTC, USD, BTC, 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 ETH, BTC, ETH, BTC, BTC. So pretty much what this is saying is that against Bitcoin, most alts are going down against Bitcoin, even though they might be going up against USD. So because that's the case, I don't really want to be going into alts. I want to be sticking with Bitcoin for the most part when it comes to what I want to buy. So that's what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be sticking with Bitcoin for the most part because trying to catch certain alts. I mean, I did catch Cardano the other day, uh, which outperformed Bitcoin, but for the most part, it just is a lot safer right now, in my opinion, to stick with Bitcoin. Okay, so what we're going to do now is go to the market scan and start off with the total market cap. On the monthly, you could see that this is the 61.8 of the entire move up. So it's a major support. So I have been saying that in this area has been a good buy zone, good buying opportunity. So this has pretty much been... 29k 28k mm, yeah basically 28 to 29k has been in this range and now we're at 31,500 so it's slightly above it but yeah i've been buying within this range anything under 30 is really good if the total market cap comes up to 1.49 trillion i will definitely be taking a lot of profits on my longs because i am not so sure that the I guess bear market or the bloodshed is over, but I do expect a bounce. So that is the total market cap on the monthly going down to the weekly. You can see that we are finally getting a good bounce. However, this is only the day one. And last week we had the same thing where it went all the way up and then came all the way back down. However, because it did go all the way up and come all the way back down. Now, a lot of the sellers that who, who sold on the way up they're no longer there so now if there's enough buying pressure there should be less selling pressure because they already sold and the buying pressure should move the total market cap up and uh, essentially the price of crypto up so that's the total market cap then we have the total market cap excluding btc so this is the altcoin market cap and it's honestly it's the same exact thing. You have the golden ratio right here. It's it's in this buy zone. There's also the 200 EMA, which is pretty close to. It's like I said though. I am rather I'm I'm more into Bitcoin right now. I do want to get into alts once they once I think there is a bottom a bottom is formed. I definitely want to be going into alts more. Um, personally, right now. I am very, very, very limited dollar cost averaging into some of my long term portfolio picks for my altcoins, but I'm not and and, and, I, and I'm, I'm doing some trades when we get some volatility, but the trades are obviously ma uh, managed with risk like my risk is managed in my trades. I'm not just buying and holding alts. That is the, la the last thing that I'm doing is buying and holding a large position of alts. I will trade some alts when I feel like there's a good opportunity to trade them. And I am putting, like I mentioned, very, very, very small amounts. I think I have, I think I have 5% of my portfolio in alts, um, which of course is different because for everyone, because like 5% of $10,000 is a lot different than 5% of five million dollars you know so it's all about risk management really and i definitely do want to be going into alts but just not necessarily right now so i have some exposure in my long-term portfolio but in my trading account um i'm not i'm not doing what i'm doing with bitcoin where i am buying under thirty thousand and waiting um because i don't know exactly what's going to happen with alts so we'll get more into that in a second but now we'll go into the market cap of Bitcoin and Ethereum. 
and yeah i reached reached this big buy zone pretty good and now it's on its way up i like that once it comes back up here i really want to be selling at least 50 percent of everything that i have so this should give you a clue at, like that says okay so I expect to move up, but I do not want to be holding and I will not be getting euphoric and I will definitely be selling on the way up. Like that's my, that's my game plan. So I'm waiting for a big bounce, a big enough bounce that, that, you know, has enough momentum behind it and raises the prices enough to a point where I want to sell because I don't want to be selling Bitcoin, you know, at 33,000 just because, it, it pumped up from 29, you know, from 20 or from 28 to 33. No, I want to be selling at these key levels such as the 38.2 Fibonacci, the 50 Fibonacci and the 61.8 Fibonacci and also um, support and resistance levels. So that's that's the main game plan. Let's look at the dominance levels now, though, because this is still really important. We have the crypto dominance levels for altcoins. And as you could see, the altcoins are really going down 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 in value they have crossed over you know the the dominance levels are finally catching up to the price and the dominance of alts are going down altcoin <coughs> sorry altcoins are getting demolished and a lot of altcoins that are fly by fly by night are literally flying and no longer here so they are going away and that is very 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 important to realize so looking at the dominance levels on the weekly time frame what can we see we could see you know look back look back what happened in 2017 excuse me 2018 it jumped all the way up i mean yeah in 2017 it also jumped all the way up and this was because the ethereum ico boom came and now we have this basically um shitcoin you know ico if you want to call it that phase and this 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 phase of just like bull crap uh f nft stuff like just stuff that doesn't matter you know it's it's like it's it's so aggravating uh knowing that like 99 per percent of altcoins there's tens of thousands of altcoins right now and 99 percent of them are total garbage complete trash and like this needs to come back down so i'm glad that this is coming back down i was really hoping that we would get a super cycle um up to here or at least reach back up here uh, this cycle but we didn't do that so that was that was very annoying um because that was definitely going to be my like to completely cash out everything to leave crypto and retire on an island you know if this if it hit up here but it didn't do that and this I don't know. Doesn't this remind you of what Bitcoin did during the wick off or wike off, excuse me, wike off uh, distribution phase? So now it's like, yeah, the altcoin dominance is falling and the next support is down here. So this is where I would go in heavy, but into alts. But the thing is, like I looking at this, I could see it. I could see it pop down to here because this was the previous support. You could see here, here, here. Uh, well, maybe not here, but here um, and here, this was support. And maybe it'll come back up. It'll pop back up. But the 38.2 is down here. This is where the 38.2 is. So not only is this where the 38.2 is, but on the weekly time frame, this is the 200 weekly uh, moving average, exp exponential moving average, which it usually gets hit, which makes me think that it will continue to come back down. Now, the question is, Will it come down to the 61.8? Because I'm not too sure if it actually will come back down to the 61.8. But this is this is a very long time. Like this entire sequence right here is months and months and months and months. It's 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 June right now. So June, July, August, September, October. So we could be seeing not necessarily like stagnant, but basically like flat to going sideways and down to like uh, big spikes up followed by big crashes down in the altcoin market until we reach at least this level and then and then maybe even this level down here because uh, like 
this is just what Fibonacci, this is what Fibonacci is, you know? And so I'm waiting for the 61.8 to like, if, if, if the altcoin dominance comes down to 61.8, I will be going. So I'll be going all into alts, like hundred percent into alts, right? If it comes, when it comes down to the 38.2, I'll be going heavy into alts for trades and I'll be, you know, I'm stacking in, in my alts on the way down very, 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 very slowly, like literally 0.5% of my portfolio at a time into alts. And I'll put more in down here, but uh, I don't know. Just looking at altcoin dominance, this level is like where I would really, really want to want to be putting a lot in. However, if by the time we get down to the 50 mark, this is a this is sort of a pretty big support level. So let me do this. This right here is big enough support for me to where. I'll say, okay, we have this previous resistance and we have this uh, cluster over here, plus the 50% Fibonacci, plus the 200 EMA, plus the 200 MA. Yeah, so EMA is white and the MA is, um, is gray and green. So this is the 200 weekly ma this is the 200 weekly ema and this is the 300 weekly ma um right there this is uh em7 excuse me let me go down to right here ma7 is 300 so 300 ma7 and ma7 is gray and 200 is green. So 300 MA right there, excuse me. And, and, and you know, it could reach all, it could reach these. So this is what I'm saying. Altcoins are scarily, <laughs> it is scary that they can still drop significantly considering that they dropped 80% already. But it might be the fact that this right here could be because ethereum could still could still fall and maybe a few other ones could still fall but that that it worries me it totally worries me because i don't think like like we're just going to be going like back and forth sorry like this like boom 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 i don't think that that this is this is that's going to be the case where it's simply stuck in this range forever. I think that we're going to come down. I think that we're going to break this range to the downside. And I think we're going to break it down here and come to 38.2. So anyway, um, cautious with alts. That's pretty much the gist of it. it, it just basically the gist of it is be cautious with alts. Um, we're coming into, we're coming into an area on Bitcoin dominance, the 23 you know, the 23%, same thing right here, 23%. We're coming into this area for alts. So yeah, we might, we might see, uh, we might see a bounce, but the fact is like, is it going to be sustained? So if you want short term, if you want short term, like gains on alts, it might be a good time around these levels to get into some alts for short, short, short term. But for long term, I'm, very cautious and I would wait to get into alts until right here um, when until Bitcoin dominance reaches right here and altcoin dominance reaches you know 38.2 like right around there anyway I've spent way too much time on that one thing uh, moving on going to the uh, US dollar currency index the basically the dollar every single time that this has fallen down we have a crypto bull market I don't think that we're gonna have that right now I think that the dollar is pretty strong it did fall down from this zone so fingers crossed that it keeps on falling i suppose i don't necessarily it's a very difficult thing to say like oh i want the dollar to you know fall because like when the dollar falls bitcoin rises so like i do sort of want it to fall but obviously i, I want the dollar to be strong too so it's a <laughs> catch 22 right there um and so we're, we are getting this rejection, but I don't know the way that things are going right now. I don't know if you could necessarily rely on this chart too much, to be honest. Next up, I do look at the NASDAQ and if we take the NASDAQ, if we take the Fibonacci from here, AKA the previous, 
so, uh, like top right before the COVID crash, and then also the recovery, the subsequent recovery, we get the 61.8, right? And that's fine. But taking it from the actual bottom, which is like right around here, this is the 61.8. And that, once again, it makes me sort of worried. And this is another big reason why I'm going to be taking my profits as the price moves up. So let's just go into actual, you know, actual Bitcoin now. I think we could actually do that. Okay, so as you can see, I have a lot of things panned out right here. I have the yearly open and close, which was the which is the purple, which is at twenty eight thousand nine hundred thirty nine dollars, and we have the monthly open and Monday high. Um, actually, I want to I want to get rid of this because this was just something that I was doing uh, before for a shorter term trade. So I'm gonna get rid of that. I'm gonna get rid of that, and I'm gonna get rid of this. So clean it up just a tad. And actually, we don't even need this. So what I'm looking at on the monthly is, excuse me, on the weekly, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine weeks in a row, nine weeks in a row of red. And honestly, this this is not red, but it, it might as well have been. So nine or maybe 10 weeks of red. Uh, the last time that we had nine weeks of red was never. So that was a first. Um, and I just think that a bounce is due. And the last time that there was this much red in the stock market in, the, you know, spy was back in the early 2000s. And what happened after that, there was a 28% jump. So which was very, very, very big for for the stock market. So I still think that, you know, I'm expecting a jump. I have my 38.2, um, 50% and 61.8% all mapped out here. So I have it mapped out like based off the weekly from the top to the bottom. One thing that I really, really like is the fact that Bitcoin hit not on Bitfinex, but on Coinbase, also on a few other ones, uh, such as FTX and on Kraken, it actually hit my buys for $26,000, which happened to be right there. So the absolute low. So if you've been paying any attention, to basically what I've been saying on Twitter in the VIP, like I've basically been saying 26,000 Bitcoin is where I want to go in. And so you could just type that in, putting, you know, putting in here again that I don't care if Bitcoin falls to 14K, I'll be all in with every single penny I have and I get my hands on if we see 26K, you know, 20 Bitcoin hit 26K and it bounced 17% and now it's up way more than that. Bumping my 26K post from February, you know, 26K, 26K. I've, I've said this so many times. So, you know, I just don't like, that's what I said. I said, I'm buying Bitcoin at 26K. When it hits 26K, I'm buying it. I'm stacking in orders under 30K and I'm buying at 26. And it hit 26K on so many different exchanges. So, now I'm mostly in Bitcoin. I have a lot of Bitcoin um, and I have a fair amount of Ethereum and I'm sort of just holding and I'm just waiting until it reaches my sell zones because I don't want to be over trading this. I over traded it in 2017, in 2018, in 2019, in early 2020. I don't want to be over trading this. Like so many people think that you have to be trading in and out and day trading all day, every day. Like you don't have to do that. You, if you just wait and you get a good buy, you know, such as down here, literally the freaking bottom, or you even down here, even at 28,000, dang, even at 29,000, that's still a great buy. So I'm just waiting until it reaches here and nothing has changed. So this is when crypto could get really boring and you have to be patient. Like patience is a freaking virtue, okay? So I am waiting, 
I am almost comp all in at this point and I am mostly in Bitcoin and I'm just waiting for my profits to get hit. So if it comes back down, like if it comes, it could, it could fall significantly and I'll like, I'm still going to be fine because it could fall 14, excuse me, it could fall 16% from where it is and I'm still going to be fine. In fact, I have five percent i i have some cash right now and so if it falls back down here like this is definitely the level this should be the big buy the big buy level is is at 26k it's still there it's still around 26k because this wix many times it comes back down and retouches the wick maybe not the absolute bottom of the wick, but it retouches a large portion of it before zooming back up. Like I highly doubt it's going to come back down to this wick. It's going to fill this wick in, you know, with the actual, with the actual bar and then just like go down again, like from there. I just don't, I don't know. That doesn't seem plausible. Like it seems it's plausible. Sure. But it doesn't seem likely it seems like if we get another wick down, it'll, it'll be a wick and then we'll get a bounce back up. And so I still have some, I still have some buys, some cash to buy right here. And I, you know, I, I always have at least like, not always, but in these circumstances, I have 5% cash that I'm just holding just in case it falls down to, I don't know, like $15,000 or something like that. I have 5% cash and I'll just, I'll throw it all in at that price um, in case there's some real, real big black swan event or something like that. But I don't know. I just don't see that stuff happening. So it's very boring. Just waiting and waiting and waiting. We've been in this period for 28 days now. Okay. It's been 28, 29 days, basically within this range. So what are you supposed to do? You like, do you want to, do you want to go in to the, to the 30 minute chart? I just want to, I just need to explain this, to, you know, explain this real quick. Let's say you go and you want to trade the 30 minute chart. Okay. Scroll back and you get, and you get, it looks like this. You don't see anything past, past here, right? What, what would you do? You could buy, would you buy this support or would you buy this support? Would you sell this resistance or would you sell this resistance? Well, if you want to buy this support and it, this happened, well, it never hit that support. And then let's say you want to sell this resistance. Well, it never hit this resistance. So you're out of luck. And then you say, okay, I'm still going to buy this support. Well, it jumped all the way down. And not only did, did it jump down to the support, but it fell below it and then closed below it and then closed still below it the next time, the next day or the next 30 minutes. So are you, are you keeping that position open or are you closing it? You close it. Oh, sorry. It jumps all the way up and you're screwed again. And it, and even if you held it, it jumps all the way back up, but your take profit was right here. Cause this was the previous resistance. Maybe you lowered it to right here. Cause this was the new resistance. Well, it never hit it. So you're out of luck. Like th this is so, this is not what, I want to trade. <laughs> I, I do not want to get chopped up. And so I'm trying to be like very realistic here and say, look, like 99% of people cannot trade this type of price action. What do you say? What are you supposed to do here? Buy here, sell here. Okay. So here it, it, resistance support support. Okay. So, so you have two support. Okay. So you're going to buy here at the support. You buy here at the support put their resistance right here. So you're going to sell here. Nope. Doesn't come up to the resistance falls down below the support. Okay. So you sell here for a loss. Maybe you put on a short trade here and where's your, where's your take profit? Maybe your take profit is here. So you make one, one good trade based off, basically based off of just support and resistance for 2%, 3%. Okay, cool. So you make two, 3%, <laughs> like minus the fees. Why are you wasting your time? It, it makes no sense, right? So, uh, so 
okay, maybe maybe you'll maybe you'll short here and you'll and you'll buy here. That that worked. You know, that worked. But you know, what are you going to where you where are you going to manage your how are you going to manage your time? You know, how are you going to manage your time? Are you, and now and now it's like, okay, here's the here's the previous resistance. So you're going to short right here. Okay, so you're going to short right here um, with a stop loss above here. So a stop loss, you know, at like, let's say 2%. And are, is your take profit going to be at the previous support? You know, that's a trade, sure. But what are the probabilities of that trade actually happening? You know, what are the probabilities of the trade actually happening? Considering that we, we already had this giant move up and all of the sellers are, well, not all the sellers are exhausted, but a lot of the sellers are exhausted because they just sold and now like where are they you know it just doesn't make logical sense to trade this you know what i traded i will show you what i traded i traded link when it was very very obvious to short right here and it was very very obvious to short right here this like this was such an this right here right here such an easy short why resistance resistance shorting opportunity right here we're in a downtrend we've been you know in a downtrend for a very long time it it's not like how bitcoin is where where it's consolidating it doesn't look like this this right here is accumulation this is where smart money really big smart money accumulates okay they don't accumulate up here or up here or up here they accumulate here just like how they accumulated all the way back here. Look at this. Accumulation, accumulation, accumulation. And then they sell when it pumps up. Let's bring it all the way back. Link's, Link's a difficult example because of the fact that it freaking went, uh, went crazy during the bull market. I mean, during the bear market. But here's one. Cardano. Okay. Look, it falls down and it's in this, this is an accumulation zone. Okay. It's a, it's okay to trade, but this right here, this right here, all accumulation. All right. All accumulation. And you know what? It did fall back down below the accumulation zone, but that's why you have to have conviction, you know? So what I'm saying is that right now does not seem like the time to be going in and out of trades every day, all day, you wait for volatility, you wait for action. You know, most, most of trading is boring. Most of life is boring. Most of making money is boring. And the markets are what the markets are the tool that exchanges the money from the impatient to the patient. Okay. So be patient, chill out. There will be plenty of opportunity, but in order to take advantage of the opportunity, you need to have capital. And the only way you're going to have the capital, unless you're, you know, making, making a bu bunch of money, you know, in the real world, which I, at a job, which I hope you are, the only other way to make a bunch of capital is to preserve the capital that you do have in the market. Okay. And then go in when there's a high probability of things actually going very, very well. And right now, I don't necessarily see that happening, you know, except for with Bitcoin and maybe, maybe Ethereum, but Ethereum doesn't really look that good either. So Bitcoin's the way that Bitcoin's, you know, what I, what I am looking at right now, but let's look at other coins too, you know, let's look at other coins too. So let's go to Ethereum and check Ethereum out. So looking at Ethereum, um, the first thing that I see is the fact that this is a long term support right here at, you know, eighteen hundred dollars. So anything really anything under nineteen hundred dollars is pretty long term support. So I do like it. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine weeks of red for Ethereum. So hopefully we could get this first, you know, green week right here. We do have a gigantic, um, 
uh, bullish divergence on the MACD, which is pretty solid. And this is the first week of it ticking up, which is good. We also have the first uptick of the RSI on the weekly. So things may be, may be fairly bullish on the weekly time frame. Going down to the daily time frame. Um, once again, this is this is one of my longer term buy zones. Literally anything under eighteen hundred is a long term buy for me when it comes to Ethereum. Obviously, like I mentioned before, I was buying I was buying. Well, I don't know. I was buying I was buying a lot of Bitcoin, but I was also buying a fair amount of Ethereum. I want to say a fair amount of Ethereum. So um, I was buying both, um, and thinking about it like i have to look at i look, have to look at other um you know other coins and things like that to 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 very much make sure so hold on a second i'm looking at soul right now idle buy zone idle buy zone is really more at, at around 30 32 but Some of these, some of these are worth putting a small amount of capital into. That's what I'll, that's what I'll say right now is that some of them are worth putting a small amount of capital into. And, and so, like I mentioned, I do have a small amount of capital into, into alts. And what I want to do is, is see if they, if they would outperform Bitcoin, but really I look at Ethereum against Bitcoin to and also I look at the dominance levels uh, to determine whether or not I really want to be going, you know, really want to be taking a, a heavy look at alts. And until Ethereum reaches, you know, this previous support down here against Bitcoin, eh, I don't, I just don't want to be going super heavy into alts. Like, I don't know. I have a feeling, I have a feeling they might pop they might pop off as Bitcoin pops off, but it's still it's still pretty it's still pretty risky. Like it's it's difficult. It's so difficult to really say. Like it's not actually it's not actually so difficult to really say. It's just like look at the altcoin against Bitcoin. Okay, look at it against Bitcoin. This is dot against Bitcoin. Where does this end? Maybe it'll pop off right here, but it's clearly in a downtrend. Where's the next support? The next support, you could say that you could say there's a support right here, and then the next and the support underneath that is down there, right? So, where would you really have the best opportunity for DOT? Would it be right here in the middle, in like no man's land below, or I guess, or I guess it is at at this um support right here where it, where it previously was let me also check the fibonacci hmm like this 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 right here i mean this is a this is the 88 percent right here i like the 88 it's supposed to be it's supposed to represent the number that the big institutions will um buy at but yeah like against bitcoin i suppose i suppose that this is this is somewhat of a good level but like where's the best level right that's what i want to look at the best level is down there for sure but there's also you know there's also this level we do this make it green let's look at uniswap against bitcoin okay yeah, like my ideal buy zones for Uniswap, it was right there and then it was right there. But it just kept on going down. You know, it just kept on kept on dropping. So now the question is where's the next one? Well, the next one like realistically is down here. Cuz why would I buy Uniswap if I could just buy Bitcoin? if Uniswap against Bitcoin is looking like this, right? Why would I buy DOT if DOT against Bitcoin is look is is looking like this? Like, why would I buy anything if against Bitcoin it looks like horrible, you know? I want to buy things 
that would outperform Bitcoin, that looked better against Bitcoin. And right now, nothing, nothing really looks better against Bitcoin. Some of them might become like ZRX, for example. ZRX is coming is actually at a pretty decent, very decent support level against Bitcoin. So maybe ZRX, that could be a play, right? But it, it hit it, it hit it hit it in March, and it only it did not go up that much. Like, hold on a second, boom. Well, I don't know. I guess you could get. I guess you could get seventy percent. You know, out of the, out of this move, if you get the bottom and and you sell close to the close to the top. So ZRX ZRX is is something that I might actually want to want to scale into because against Bitcoin, it's it's at this major 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 support back here, right here, right here. It's not a major support. Maybe banned. Uh, this coming into a major 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 support not necessarily not there yet so i wouldn't really want band um, bat C getting close getting close to this ideal buy zone down here but yeah i would want to buy i would want to buy coins i don't know why i have this buy and hold right here for this it should be right this should be here this should be my buy and hold but yeah, like you have to look at the coin against Bitcoin and determine how you want to play it, you know, because it might look good against UST, but against Bitcoin, if it's not good, then why don't you just buy Bitcoin, you know, Ethereum's one of the only other ones I could like say, all right, I get it, like buy ethereum right but even looking at ethereum against bitcoin as soon as ethereum hits this zone right here i'm freaking selling i'm selling my ethereum so let me write that down so going back to ethereum i have the same plan for ethereum that i have with bitcoin which is to be selling on the way up so I am hoping that we do get a big pop up to at least 2368. And that's where I'm going to be taking 25% of my profits in my trading portfolio. If we get up to 2590, I will be selling 50% of all of my Ethereum there. And if we get up to 2773, I'm selling all of my crypto i'm just basically going 100 percent into cash with everything i have if ethereum reaches this level right here and it's very simple like i buy a little bit of ethereum down here and if it comes up here the thing with bitcoin the the, the thing that separate uh separates bitcoin from ethereum with me is that with bitcoin i'll buy it I'll buy it under 30K all day long. I'll buy it under 30K all day long and I'll stack 100%, I'll stack as much as I can at 26 because it, like there's no doubt in my mind that it's going to pop up again. It's like, you know, here to stay and which also, also accounts for Ethereum, but like there's just so much more confidence in it for me. Um, that it'll stay and that it won't fall so drastically when it comes to ethereum and altcoins everything outside of bitcoin there's always the possibility that it could fall a lot more and just the fact that bitcoin dom that the dominance level is not where i want it to be even right there or even down there or or down there like it's not even where the first where I, where I want it to be originally, like right now. But so between the, do I don't know. Yeah. Between the dominance levels. Yeah. Between the dominant and this, this, I would have to, this, I want to bring this up because normally, well, I guess I'll bring it to the 23.6, but normally in bear markets, this moves up a lot higher and before coming back down. So maybe in this area, I'd want to get more into alts, you know, a little bit try my luck with alts but right now i want to wait i just, i don't know there's too many conflict there's too many things that are too scary like 
I want to preserve my capital. I don't want to put on too much risk. Things, alts could jump up 100% tomorrow. This is the thing. Like, alts could jump up 100% tomorrow, right? But is what's the probability of that happening? And is it that big of a deal if you miss out on a 100% move tomorrow with some alts? And then it drops all the way back down, you know, and, and it drops and it drops, you know, 50% from there or 80% from there. Like, you know, back when it back here, it's very obvious. Yes, I want to be buying and I want to and I want to be buying because we're still in the bull market. Fibonacci sequence is still good. And any literally any time, any time in from basically October ish, this is when it became very obvious October, November really is when it became very, very obvious that we're in a bull market and you want to be buying every single thing that you could possibly get into. Right. But not right now it's not there yet. It's not there yet. And I would, and I don't even think that the bottom bottom is in yet for a lot of these alts. So that's why I'm, that's why I'm so hesitant. And I'm saying like, yeah, even if, even it could fall you know, I mean, I mean, it could jump up, it could jump up a hundred percent. You know, there's bear market rallies, there's bear market rallies and you need it. You could take advantage of those bear market rallies. Absolutely. Take advantage of these bear market rallies. But given the macroeconomic situation, given so much and so much that's happening right now, I would rather wait until there's some cataclysm. Uh, what, how do you pronounce that cataclysmic event or major, major, major washout, even more of a washout than negative 85% in alts, or maybe uh, if the alts, you know, if, if the alts come down to like the, the 88% against Bitcoin, if, if they come down against Bitcoin and they reach like major, major support levels against Bitcoin, then yeah, I would, I would totally buy them because that's basically how you make a lot of money like if xrp comes down here against bitcoin i'll buy xrp i don't care if dot comes down here down here or down here against bitcoin i'll buy dot link i i already like link but definitely if link yeah like i like the, i like link right now link's pretty good it's solid fundamentals everything like that um vet let me check this out vet right here. If I do this, if I extrapolate this to be the bottom, 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 tap, 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 tap. If it hits this definitely, well, I don't know about definitely, but I, I could totally see me buying vet at this line. But for the most part, for the most part, I'm really not looking to get too much to put to, to go super 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 heavy into alts hold on a second maybe matic maybe matic i do and anything basically anything that's at the 88 percent i might want to i might want to get into Here's the other thing. If you really, really like a project, right? If you really, really like a project, I'm still, like I mentioned, I am dollar cost averaging into different projects right now. Okay. I am averaging into different projects. So I'm not going super, super heavy and allocating 50% of my portfolio into, into altcoins, but I am allocating certain amounts into into projects five percent five to ten percent um really more like five right now but you know it'll be it'll it'll be up there especially for the ones that i really really like like us i've I, I bought us and i bought some more down here so i am lowering my average buy-in price for a lot of for 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 different alts that i really really like but for the vat, for, for, still though, yeah, I'm just saying what I'm doing. You know, I'm just saying what I'm doing and, and what I see. And I don't want, yeah, I just don't, I don't want to 
be going too crazy. I just don't want to be going too crazy. Like, I just don't see the appeal right now in alts. Because the the, the the chances of losing money is, like, really a lot. So, in summary... In summary, I am basically all in Bitcoin right now. I've been all in Bitcoin uh, from 26K. Uh, I've been stacking in under around 31, 30, 29, 28. Stacking, 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 stacking. Put all, almost all my chips in the table um, uh, on a fall. And, and I'm mostly in Bitcoin. I have some Ethereum. And that's for the long, long, long term. Maybe Solana at this point, because there's been so much FUD about around it, might might be a play. Uh, I would love I would love for the altcoin dominance levels to fall down a little bit lower before I get really excited in alts. I would also love for Ethereum against Bitcoin to fall down to there to its uh next major support before i really fall back in love with alts and and i want to go heavy in alts and yeah basically basically all of that so i don't really know what else to put in here other than if you have requests put your requests as comments and i will look into them also i am moving right now and once i am into my new place I will be posting up way more videos uh, way more often. Additionally, I am working on my Crypto Elite Crypto Mastery course 2.0. I've been working on it for such a long time now and I'm I'm still working on it, so it's, you know, it's happening. And um, other than that, take it easy and uh, keep on, you know, I, I like accumulation is the name of the game. Accumulation during bear markets is the name of the game you accumulate and then when things pop off that's when you could take your profits right and and the other thing that i want to say is that i'm looking at short like i'm looking at longer term sorry i'm looking at longer term things but also i'm seeing this right here like this is obviously in a downtrend right it's it's obviously a downtrend but this right here low higher low higher low higher low also high higher high higher high higher high and possibly a higher high like this is a short term possible for like rallying formation right formation that that could be good so there might be certain things that you could see but just overall what i talked about uh, when it comes to alts is the overall general uh, picture picture of it but then again this could also potentially be like you know bear flag type deal like this so could just it could just be doing something like this before it falls back down you know you don't really know but i think i gave you the gist of everything that i'm looking at it's really these it's really these uh, dominance levels and market caps and ETH BTC levels that I'm that I'm looking at the most that I really really want to make sure is good and then also you know I have I have my cells I have my cells my my TPs for Ethereum for Bitcoin and 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 once Bitcoin or Ethereum reaches the levels that I have set out. Like I'm taking, like if Bitcoin reaches 34,500, I'm going to take 25% of my profits on every single trade that I have in my trading portfolio. So whether that's Bitcoin, Ethereum or something else, I'm going to take my profits. Same thing up here, same thing up here. And especially if Ethereum reaches these levels, I'm going to be selling everything. So it's not just Ethereum, just because I have this, you know, on the Ethereum chart and I say, I'm going to be selling 25%. I'm going to be selling 25% of everything you know it once ethereum reaches these levels and then hopefully hopefully buy it back you know at 2000 or something like that and this is getting pretty long so i'm going to end this here and i'm going to make another update video um you know as soon as i can it's a little difficult with moving and everything but this is uh this is what i'm thinking of the market right now
So I'm going to end this right now and I'm going to say keep on stacking those sats, keep on making those gains, preserving your capital, stick around because if you are in crypto, oh my gosh, it can be life changing. Absolutely. So stick around and make sure you get in and you buy stuff when there is huge, huge, huge discounts. Don't deploy all of your capital. Don't deploy every single thing that you have. And so you're left without rent money. You're left without money for, you know, good, normal, good, just food and, and other things like that. Don't make it so that you are strapped for cash and you literally can't afford clothes or food or shelter. Um, like work super hard, try to make as much money as possible and then use that to invest and invest wisely and don't be scared, you know, to have orders in when things drop and when things look like they're at the absolute worst, that's usually the best time to be buying. So, with saying that, I'll uh, I'll end this now and I'll see you in the next video.